give me five minutes of your time. Let me get the cut of your jib. Assets, venture capital, liquidity, marsupials. <coughs> Metatarsal. I was surrounded with music from a young age. My brother used to make me mix cassettes and then my mum was always playing like blues in the house and stuff. So it's always been part of the kind of um, the oxygen, as it were. But like, yeah, P Pixies and Nirvana were the ones where it was like, right, I'm going to dye my hair blue. I'm going to, you know, make holes in my jeans, pick up a guitar and then like really become um, a pain in the ass. My listening habits really got switched into this whole kind of post-rock and math-rock thing. That was the big thing in Oxford at the time, was basically largely instrumental bands that were quite experimental. You know, no one was like trying to get into the enemy or go, go to London. What was cool in Oxford was kind of uncool in a way. And it was exciting to be surrounded by, by that because it was freeing. There was a scene and it was kind of cliquey, but it wasn't careerist. It was kind of, it was more about um, doing something that was fresh and experimental. That was where like the, the foundation of Foles came out of was that scene. I was um, actually trying to do a remix for Umu Sangare, brilliant like Malian musician, and the remix didn't go anywhere. But I wrote this riff for the remix that then I kind of stripped out. I sent it to the guys, and everyone really liked it, and it became Wash Off. I'll have this kind of private conversation in a way with the guitar and with myself into the loop pedal. And then something beautiful happens. There is a kind of alchemy through the different pa characters and personalities and tastes within the band stretch and morph. The idea that was the product of one mind becomes a collaborative process. I don't think that I've ever kind of written guitar from a UK perspective in a weird way. I never grew up listening to Led Zeppelin, all the Stones, all the Beatles. I've never learned how to play chords on a guitar. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. I never had lessons or anything. I'd like to think that I haven't lost what makes the way that I write identifiably me. You know, I feel like I do have a style of guitar playing and I have a kind of, there's something that I'm attracted to and that's where my mind and my ear will go, and that's why things sound the way they do. I thought just it'd be fun to kind of play just a snippet of one of the songs that wasn't finished on Holy Fire. I don't know, we went off it for some reason, and like, we often go in with more ideas than we can possibly pursue to the end. probably cut a quarter of the songs away and then focus on the rest to finalise the album. That idea was something that informed everything Not Saved is that we didn't, we wanted to take every song to the finish line and have enough time to really explore like every corner and aspect of each song. Last is a good example of a song again that like changed through many different um, forms and like I it was one of those actually where I was writing loops for it that that frayed the idea in a way like it it started off as one idea and then I'd write something that that would then 
show a potential other avenue that the song could go down. And by the end of it, there was kind of five different possibilities for the song. And this might be one of those where there is some kind of bittersweet feeling about what it could have been. It is actually like the old romantic ideal, the romantic poets all felt that the poem was at its most beautiful before it was written. And the moment you, you put it down into paper, it loses something. So, you know, and I, I kind of agree with that in a way. You know, I think that the, the, all of the musical ideas that are out there, the idea of them is more beautiful than, than the end product, you know. That's the job of the musician, is to try and wrestle between the imagined beauty and the one that then comes out of the speakers. I wish that I could approach it in a more balanced way, but for whatever reason I can't. Um, and I'm not romanticizing that or just trying to say this is the way that stuff should be made, you've got to suffer for your art and stuff. But I just don't have a way of doing it healthily and in balance. You prioritize the creative process and the music and making it great, it, it, it's, it's a priority above your own well-being for that period of time. But when I'm at the end of it, which I am now, I actually look back on like, I feel like overall it was an incredibly rewarding and nourishing process getting to this point where it's like, oh, I've written 17 songs with meaning and depth and imagery and, and sentiment, you know, and, and that's come out of, that's come out of a place where they weren't there before, it's been created and that's why it's worth doing. I think there is probably a parallel reality where like, I'm not making music, but I am doing something creative. I'd be writing or I'd be making art or um, I just feel a need to express myself. And maybe it's a type of therapy or maybe it's an addiction. I feel like, you know, the best is yet to come musically. That's kind of what keeps you going is this idea that the best song you'll ever write is the next song.